All right, so today's Wednesday. There's my load. I would have made a video of it being loaded, but it was pouring rain yesterday uh, when I got there. And, you know, I didn't feel like having the camera all soaking wet. Well, I should say my phone, really. So, this is my load. It's three, uh, three reels of wire, 12,000 pounds a piece. So, two chains of pop, you know, nothing big. Uh, I'll probably get a little more in depth about this later on. Uh, but obviously these are a little top heavy. So if you're driving, you know, if you're driving this and you pick these up, corners, good idea to go really slow. Who cares who's behind you? Who cares what's going on? But take your good old time and uh, just get where you got to go safely without screwing anything up. Um, I guess a few little tips here about the chains. I like taking my, well, one, I like also using two, two uh, spools on the side of the trailer to do my chains. Uh, you know, because you get rating off both of them. I also take my hooks and I like putting them down. That way, they ain't slipping out anywhere. Um, same thing goes for uh, these binders. A little quick tip when you put these through, choke the chain up on the other side so you don't have three feet of chain flopping around over here and put the top put the top hook on the binder first when you do the top hook it'll pull down the weight of the binder instead of you having to fight it pulling the chain and the binder up towards it it'll pull down so that way you will do the top first pull down pull this up with your hand and then lock the chain you'll get the least of you know the, the least amount of slack and it just make it easier uh, also I did I'm gonna do a re little review here but I'm trying out different lubricants for these binders. Uh, well, we all know they rust and they're a pain in the ass. Uh, so far, uh, penetrating oil is good for the meantime, but you want something that lasts long and you don't have to come out here and spray these all the time. Um, it looks like this grease in a can, well, not that one, but this grease in the can looks like it's going to be the best bet so far. Because even now, it's been raining for three days. And I can still move that binder like nothing. But um, white lithium grease and penetrating oil, it looks like you get a few days of rain, it's gone. Um, in fact, these ones, I think the white, the white lithium grease, literally like a day, a day of heavy, a day of decent heavy rain, and that was it. So um, I'll probably do a review on that. Um, you know, grease and binders and whatnot. Uh, other than that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go have lunch over here at Wendy's. I'm not lunch. Well, breakfast, lunch. Who knows? <laughs> it is practically 10 o'clock here. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go have breakfast and get out of here, um, and hopefully deliver today. But I but I doubt it. Um, I got six hours to drive, and I think I think where I gotta go closes at four. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Take care, guys. All right, so I stopped at the rest area a little bit ago, and I go to start the truck, and I want to start. Well, this is the second time I put these bolts on this starter because the, um, well, I'll show you the one feed wire from the actual starter solenoid into the starter. Um, you know, the bolt was on there when I got, you know, put the starter on. I didn't touch the bolt. It's whatever was put on in the factory overdid it. Apparently they didn't tighten it because the first bolt apparently backed its way off and fell out and I had some random bolts and I found some that fit but they didn't fit very well because I think what happened is this bolt backed out and over time, you know, from arcing, I think it screwed the threads up. So I put some Loctite on it and thought it would hold but I guess not. I guess it fell off again. So, you know, luckily I can just put my hand down there and touch the wire and start, start the truck up. And uh, so now I'm over here at Tractor Supply, and I'm gonna try to put a, find a bolt that fits this and, and put it on there. Um, I still have the Loctite too, so maybe I'll throw Loctite on it. I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you what's going on here. All right, so there's your starter, there's your solenoid, uh, right there. And if you look, see the wire off right there? 
Yep, that's that's the problem. So that's the main power, and then you know the other ignition wire that turns your solenoid on and switches the switch over, and it goes to your battery, battery power, which is there, down into the other side of the switch, which goes into your starter. It's just a short little wire there. So, yep, that's that's that. So normally most guys would be like, oh shit, guess I better call. TA or Loves or whatever road service. Well, this is why you keep a freaking what hundred dollar tool kit on you and some sockets and stuff. Uh, this is gonna save me a couple hundred bucks easy, and hopefully a starter because I really uh, hope I can get a nut to thread on there and lock on. I'll probably put two nuts on it and try to lock it. So that's just uh, you know crap you find on the road right now. So um, you know. You gotta take care of yourself sometimes. Saves you a lot of money, so. Uh, I'll get back at this and hopefully the next video will be me starting a truck up. All right, so apparently these bolts are metric, even though they look standard because they have the, you know, the large, large threads on them. So I was able to get a lock, a lock nut, but the problem is it's not tightening up. I think, I think it's been arcing and it screwed the threads up. So I got the lock nut as tight as I could, and then I have a second nut that the outer, the, the back, there might be like four or five good threads on the end there, I'm assuming, and I was able to get that to tighten up pretty snug. I'm not gonna go crazy on it because I don't want it to rip whatever threads are left there, so I guess that's gonna have to work for now. Hopefully it doesn't back off. It is tight, but it's not, you know, it's not uh, guten tight, let's just say that, or it's, uh, it's not no ugga duggas, that's for sure. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna see how that goes, and uh, yeah, hopefully it works. I know it's gonna fire up because it's touching. So let's uh, go over here and fire her up. <laughs> now we just gotta hope the nuts don't fall off. All right, so I did fire up the nuts. So I'm gonna put my tools away. The gloves didn't really work, it's getting, they were getting snagged on everything. And the rubber gloves kept ripping, so that's why we got good old Gojo. I'm gonna go into this uh, tractor supply and I am going to clean up. So, right now, I, this job only cost me about, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes and about $4 and some nuts. So, uh, well, four dollars and forty cents because I bought standard first, but they had the wrong ones. So we're gonna uh, uh, pop this all together and get out of here. So I'll be back. Real quick, when you're done and they let you use their uh, sink and stuff, don't leave the sink look like this. Clean up after yourself. All right. You know it's bad enough we get a wrap. All right. See. You. All right. So. Thank you, Tractor Supply here. Um, the manager was out there watching me. I guess she got some food right here at the Wendy's. And she, uh, you know, when I was done, I came in and washed my hands, came out. She she, uh, she gave me a whole little case of bottled water. So I got a whole case of bottled water. Thank you, Tractor Supply, for free. I guess she, you know, felt bad or I don't know, wanted to help. So, uh, so I got, Hopefully the starter's fixed. Um, it looks like the threads are messed up, but I was able to get two lock nuts to hold. So we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, the first nut is somewhat semi-tight. The second one's pretty tight, but I don't want to crank down on it and rip any of the threads out. So I'm hoping that nylon lock nut keeps it from backing off. Uh, worst comes to worst, I got a couple more nuts I bought extra, and I'll I'll snare JB Weld on that and stick the nuts on because that that'll never have to come off unless I'm replacing the starter. <laughs> so that's uh, what we're doing here. Now I'm trying to get out of here. I usually don't like uh, talking while I'm driving because you know everyone gets all hippity dippity about it. But hey, you know making sense does it. So. If you can't multitask while driving a semi-truck, <laughs> you shouldn't be driving a semi-truck because 
hitting, sitting here, holding the wheel and driving is not, you know, it's not just what you do. That is for shit sure. Uh, you drive ahead, you watch people, you see what they're doing. It's almost like a, being a road detective, I guess you could say. Um, you don't necessarily just hold the steering wheel and stare ahead. Uh, that's why I think it's hilarious, all these people that talk about, oh, autonomous trucks, autonomous cars, yada, 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 yada. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot more, like I said, than holding the wheel driving here. Uh, you know, I'm sure everyone else around here might do that. A lot of four-wheelers do that. Um, a lot of other guys that drive do that, but I don't do that. So, um, I guess just to, you know, put some of the naysayers in their place. Um, although, then, then again, um, some of them have good points, you know. Lawyers like to uh, dispute everything they can. That being said, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, I got a starter again, and tractor supply helped me out. So there you go, I saved, saved a bunch of money right there. I tell you what though, it's not the first time I got a part and had, you know, found a shitty workmanship on it. Uh, that being said, if you ever get a starter, check every single boat on it. Uh, including the, uh, you know, the wire to the solenoid from the actual starter. Uh, you think it'd be tight, you think it'd be stuck, but, you know, apparently not. Uh, they just probably just put an OK sticker on it like it was checked and that's it. Yeah, it is what it is. Take the so, ahead. I am going to sit here and get back on 70 here. And we're going to continue our trip to Granite City, Illinois with these wire reels. Uh, I'd like to get it done today, but I didn't get out of there until late yesterday. So, and they stopped receiving at about 2. And I ain't going to make it today, especially with that, you know, fixing the starter. So I'm going to spend the night there and be one of the first trucks to unload in the morning because I called them and they said that there's no other trucks coming. So we'll just leave the chains on and follow them back to the road in the morning at 7 o'clock and we'll get this off for you. I said, all right, no problem. Thank you very much, sir. Another thing about these wire wheels, you get big ones like this, on ramps, off ramps. Slow the hell down. They're narrow, there's a lot of weight on them, and they're just sitting on some wood boards. You know, with some, I put coil racks on them. I've seen all kinds of goofy stuff. But they're just sitting there. You know, you get that weight moving, you can easily crack those boards. Cause that's a little, they only got a strip that much where you got two little strips that big, probably about that long, where there's 12,000 pounds of, 12,000 pounds of wire reel holding on there, so. Uh, it, it don't take much to tip one of these over. So, just just remember that when you come onto these like 15 mile an hour off ramps and stuff. Slow the hell down, who cares who's behind you. You, you don't wanna roll one of these over, that's, that's what you're doing. Um, that's pretty much it for now. Done ran. Uh, I'll probably pop back in here and when I get to the shipper, I'll show you the load and I'll talk a little bit more about my uh, binder lubrication uh, and uh, you know my little review on that and just uh, show you some tips and trips. You know, take care of your flatbed equipment, your binders, and chains. So, I'm gonna start driving here and uh, get off here. All right, I'll see you. I'm over here in Granite City and I'm gonna unload these uh, reels here. So, I figure I'll set you guys up and watch me unchain them.
take the uh, take the load off. So I'll see you.